Hey everyone, welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast, presented by the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, music videos, and tons more. I'm here, as always, with Cybsidian. Hello! And my name is Ashaninity. So much to talk about today, so much in the news. Of course, the big news this week, international news, uh, we were all subjected to pictures on our Twitter feed of Kathy Griffin holding up the bloody, dead, decapitated head of her comedy career. Yeah, that's 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 pretty true. Yeah, and you know that um, apology video that Kathy Griffin did, uh, I, where everybody was like, "Is she like being held hostage?" You mean the one that was funnier than her actually holding up the bloody head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one that was actually more funny because, and here's the thing: she was she was like really on edge, and she was like talking uh, really fast as if her life kind of depended on it. I can confirm that she was indeed being held hostage by the remnants of her career and uh, star power, <laughs> uh, threatening that she's going to be literally not interesting to anybody and might end up becoming kind of the brunt end of a joke on like, well, just don't pull a Kathy Griffin. Take whatever picture you want. Just don't pull a Kathy Griffin. You know, actually, I think there is some truth to that because that picture it is just so striking when you look at it. And I've heard several people comment now that this is going to be something that we see in history books down the road as an example of, you know, the political like, climate of our time. Yeah. This whole last two years is going to be a big chapter in any future history books on politics in general, but especially about politics in America. Like, my goodness, it's 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 a head spinner. And, and the funny thing is, is... It, like we're we're only like a couple months in. Yep, but of course we're only about eight or nine days now away from E3, and uh, so we've got oh man, so much to talk about this week. So we got uh, Far Cry Five, which is coming down the pipe. We saw trailers for this week and has stirred up some controversy. So we'll touch on that a bit, and then we've got the Final Fantasy VII remake as well in the works that uh, we've got a little information on. But first, we're going to talk about. Um, E3 and what we expect to see from Bethesda at E3 and also in Bethesda news, uh, Fallout 5, anyone? Oh, good news, good news. Mm -hmm. By the way, Bethesda's press conference time has moved. So uh, last week on the podcast, we gave you all the press conference times. The rest of them all are, are all the same. But Bethesda's has moved to 9 o'clock p.m. Pacific time on Sunday, June 11th. So if you had set your calendar for that or an alarm or anything, uh, make sure you update that. It's bumped two hours later to 9 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, on top of that, we've got a couple other little teaser bits in here here and there. Kojima looks like he is going to be at the E3 this year. Um, That's good. For sure, in person. And so we might get another surprise video um, for Death Stranding. Oh, that'd be so nice. So that's, that's something to look forward to, for sure. And we've got a handful of other little bits of news. So let's let's head right into it. Um, let's get all the controversy out of the way first. Uh, so Far Cry 5 has released a lot of trailers and info and stuff, and has been met with some... Some interesting response. Let's some say. interesting response. Yeah. Um, when I first kind of heard about it, I was like, oh, okay, cool, American Western. And then when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, they're going this way. Oh, oh. I'm not saying this is a bad move, but it is a gamble when they don't need to gamble like there's a lot of things that you can do video games about you know a far cry game in america so instead of going for something a little bit more common a little bit more grounded they they kind of rolled the dice with this concept they they've gone in with, with a lot of risk and expecting to get a really good reward now the game might be awesome it might be amazing and it looks um, it the trailers look really good i, I don't know about you i Man, it made me want to play the game. Yeah, there's there's a handful of things like that kind of set off a nerve here. Let's with... uh, let's break this down a bit because I I know I was having trouble understanding this at first. Who is offended and why? It's not a particular group that's overly offended. There seems to be a a a sizable chunk which, when they first saw this, they kind of rolled their eyes. They said, "Oh, great, more people." kind of bashing us in this kind of passive aggressive way if this game turns out to be you know preaching and telling me uh, you know how how horrible i am as an american 
you know, I don't want to play it. Well, that's a big if, though. I mean, it's... And, and that is a big if. That is a big if. And it, it might be... And I'm not saying this is what I believe. I'm just saying that this, this is... Yeah, this is what the criticism has been. But yeah. now I have heard that the criticism is being overblown in the media, as in that there's really not all that many people offended about it. Uh, what do you think about that? There's a couple. There's a, there's a fake. Um, there's a fake. Uh, a very obviously fake petition to, yeah, to the, Ubisoft's the, to cancel or or significantly change the game. That, but I mean beyond that, do you think that it is as controversial as sort of the me- news media is making it out to be? Or no, it's not. It's definitely not as bad as some people are making it out to be. Um, and we will see with the sales. And what I I feel is that we need a little bit more of the story and we need to kind of get a better grasp of what kind of narrative they're pushing. Wow. Yeah. And so th- mainly the point, the point that I want to get to is that I, I understand and I respect somebody's choice to, to get their voice out there on current you know topics of the day. But I think that in some cases it's like poking a bear. Like you, you can do your job and make a good product without you know poking a sore issue that in in my humble opinion just needs to be you know everybody just needs to cool down and stop you know stop freaking out about nonstop and you know maybe take a couple of steps back and and just kind of say uh, let's just have a breather shall we okay but if you think about the life cycle or the development time for a, a massive AAA title like this obviously it was in development yeah, two or three ago. years ago, at least, um, mm-hmm. is probably when they started developing this, at least. So yeah. what the the political landscape and the social landscape changes, can change, or I, I would say, as we sort of said at the beginning of this episode, mm-hmm. it's it's really changed a lot over the past year and a bit, couple of years. And so, that's why I don't think that this was their plan. I think that they were like, oh, this is kind of a cool thing. I think, you know, let's pull out Occam's razor and say that, you know, they were kind of aiming for one thing that they thought was popular, but has maybe turned into a bit of a sore spot. You can kind of tell this from the way that they talked about it and teased it. So the way that they first started to tease it was one way. And then they released a bunch of stuff and they released one of the first trailers and they started seeing... um, a fair bit of vocal oh groan like not necessarily uh you know i hate you i'm never gonna buy this game etc 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 uh more like do we do we really need to do this right now like this is kind of a sore issue do we really need to attack just americans in general again and so there's that mentality and so what you saw in in the next day when they had their live presser um they they spun it a little bit of a different way and they brought out the character bios and they tried to really enforce like no oh, no this is a this is an abuse of something and we want to make that clear right well i do agree that perhaps it, you know their appropriation of religious Im- imagery and symbolism is a bit risky but it does seem that the the heroes are also these midwestern americans so um mm-hmm. i guess I guess the the controversy still puzzles me to some extent, considering that everybody everybody just needs to to take a deep breath and kind of step back and say, okay, well, let's wait for more info. And I think that's the I think that's the best option. And yeah. I mean, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Yeah, uh, speak with your wallet. And exactly. If you don't well, that's like it. see, that's the thing. That's the language these companies speak. You know, which is why you know, as we spoke about on a previous podcast, there's been big changes at, at Bioware Montreal. We spoke with our wallets about Mass Effect Andromeda, and EA listened. That's the language they speak. It's it's too bad though that it's kind of pooched one of our favorite, you know, our one of our favorite IPs. Mm-hmm. And again, the game overall is, I think, didn't deserve a lot of the negativity that it got in certain aspects of it. But then in other aspects, they clearly dropped the ball and. Mm-hmm. You know, and hopefully we don't see that here. And I don't think we, I don't think we necessarily will. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm on the right now. I'm totally on the fence, and I'm not willing to commit too much more to it, other than just kind of wanting to wait to get a little bit more info. Ubisoft has a million problems, though, and 
So Ubisoft has a lot of problems. It's, I'm very upset this, I mean, with this them is, in general. <laughs> this is kind of this is almost a side issue. Um, yeah. you know, compared to everything that's come before. So expensive song and dance numbers and Aisha Tyler can only go so far. I'm a big fan of Aisha Tyler as far as like whose line is it anyway? Love that show. And she's really good on it. She's really good. I like on I, it. I like Aisha Tyler. It's nothing against nothing, nothing against her, but yeah, I'm just saying that star power at, at their uh at their press conference at last year's E three. That it's it's good and all, but it doesn't change the quality of the games. Okay, so a little quick news on Final Fantasy VII's remake and some news that came out. This has been covered uh, quite a bit, but the ramifications of it were missed on a lot of people. So they came out with this trailer for Final Fantasy VII, and they said, hey, look at what we're working on. This is coming out. We're working on this project. It's amazing. Turns out that when they did that and when they showcased that trailer, um, they had spent like not even a full year in development of doing this game. I know it's a remake, but they were at least three to four years away from this title. And then sometime this last, uh, I think it was a year, they kicked the other studio out and took it under their own wing. Which is like, okay, well now it's going to be delayed even more, and now more people are involved, and more people are saying, uh, yes, we need to do this, and then, oh no, we no, we don't want to do that, we want to do this. No, 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 not this, we don't want to do that. And so from what I'm hearing, the um, the production on the, on the title has been like basically slowed down a lot. And honestly, I don't, I think this is one of these games, again, I don't know what they're thinking over there, why they keep on like announcing stuff and they have, they're not even close to getting it out the door. Like not even close. I mean, just look at the, you know, last guardian and kingdom hearts three. It's uh, again and again, so many studios are like, Hey, this is what we're working on. And you're like, okay, well, what have you actually done on this title? Like, Oh, basically just kind of put it around with like an alpha and, you know, kind of gotten a, a general kind of like feel of what we want the game to look like, but that's, that's pretty much all. So you're like, you're like at least three years, possibly five or seven years away. If you haven't even set a studio to start working on the project in earnest and they're like, yeah, yeah but you know, but Hey, check out this cool trailer. And I think, I think a lot of devs have fallen for this trap and more and more they're starting to realize, you know, we really shouldn't showcase a game until it's like getting close to ready. But this is just, this is just ridiculous. So no, we're not going to get an announcement for Final Fantasy VII. Um, its release date will not be any time this year. It will not be any time next year. Earliest I'm calling it is maybe 2019 and probably 2020. So that's too bad. That hype train is going to run out of gas real fast. And that's the yeah, problem. They keep bashing their head against the wall with this. Like, I'm not talking about just one uh, publisher or one developer or one company. Yeah, they're all doing I'm, it. I'm <laughs> talking, they're all doing this, okay. and they've all except, made the mistakes of this. Except Bethesda. Well, recently, anyway, Bethesda has sort of really done well with mm-hmm. the, you know, keeping things under wraps until they're almost ready to be shipped out the door. Mm-hmm. I mean, Fallout, Fallout 4 being the quintessential example of that, Fallout 4 was in early development way back in 2010. And, uh, you know, it was in the, at the, in the design phase and, like, even before Skyrim came out. Yeah. And Skyrim, you and think they, about how long and that's they didn't been even, And they didn't even talk about that game until they're like, yeah, so we're like we're like six months away from launch. Now we can start talking Wasn't about it. Wasn't it E3 20, uh, 2015? Wasn't that the announcement, or was that yeah. did they announced it earlier than that? No, they announced it at, uh, like a few weeks ahead of um, of then. They they dropped the trailer a couple weeks ahead of time. I guess oh, it was okay. Like, it was almost two years uh, ago uh, this month, actually. I think, Crazy, I'm sure. But so, then that built so that built the hype for the E three present presentation, and that mm-hmm. built massive hype for the game, which at that point was just a few months away. Yeah, and so. That's that's the way to do it. Yeah, if you look at if you look at some of the the really big failings, like we could talk about failed projects for ages, but if you look at Scalebound, um, that was heavily talked about and 
you know, pushed uh, last year, I think it was, and then it was just a few weeks or a few months after it was announced that it was like, yeah, so the studios like completely dropped the ball on it, and and it just became this cascade of insane things breaking down, communications that were not right, and I know that, that there's a lot of games that work off of hype and you know building the hype train for years and years and years and years and years. And years. Um, and then also, um, and there's a lot of games that are under the kind of the radar right now. Uh, I really want to talk about them. We'll probably talk about a bunch of games that are kind of under the radar um, that we might get some pretty, you know, we might even get a couple of release dates for uh, come E3. Um, these are from smaller studios who are really working on these projects, but all they've been doing is working on the project, you know, making the game fun. And if you look back in history, these are the types of studios that you know got these smash out of the park hits that became the big gigantic studios that we have today so just bear that in mind uh for any developers that happen to be listening so yeah now we told you last week that we are not going to be getting uh, an elder scrolls 6 or a fallout 5 announcement at this year's e3 and that still stands true but there was some news i would or maybe i would say rumors about the, the, some rumors broke this week about Fallout Five and Elder Scrolls Six, and if you if you're on YouTube at all, everybody not everybody but all the hardcore you know Bethesda fan sites are talking about, hey you know Elder Scrolls Six, Elder Scrolls Six, you know here's our wish list for Elder Scrolls Six. This is gonna be so awesome. Um, that's hype, and most of them know it. Um, I feel they're kind of building you up to be disappointed. Uh, so let me make this really clear: there's not going to be a trailer or a release date or any kind of major news on Elder Scrolls 6 or Fallout 5 at E3 this year. And why? Why is it not coming out this year? What's the concrete evidence that I have that means that it's not coming out this year at all, period? It's called Morrowind for the Elder Scrolls Online. I know that a lot of people who are you know Skyrim fans and Fallout fans? They don't like that game. I bought it. I did not enjoy it at all. I the when it came out, it was buggy to hell. It was not fun. It was trying to play with friends was almost an impossibility at certain stages. It was not enjoyable. It was not anything that I wanted to play. And strangely enough, it was also something that the community didn't ask for. And we've talked about this in depth a lot, but what they're doing now is they've really cleaned up the game. Apparently it's a lot more fun now. And this year they're pushing this Morrowind expansion for the Elder Scrolls online. Mm -hmm. And they're pushing it really hard. I'm, I, I'm constantly getting ads for it. I'm constantly getting notices for it. I'm constantly getting buzz uh, info on, you know, hey, you know, this game's coming out. There's all these cool leaks. And I'm like, I really don't care. And all this cool stuff about this game. Xenomax um, and Bethesda are not going to release. They're not going to release a. Um, they're not going to release Elder Scrolls Six and Morrowind for the the MMO at the same time. They're just not going to do it. No person in marketing would tell them that that's a good idea, because they also have Scrolls coming out, which is the this trading card game, and that's coming out probably this year or next year as well. So they're not going to launch three Elder Scrolls games all at once. You just don't do that in marketing, and you especially don't do it in entertainment marketing. Now, what might we get? We might get a confirmation that they are working on it. Mm -hmm. Which is different. Wouldn't surprise us in the least if they've got these games in the design phase. But remember yeah. what I said about how Fallout 4 was in early development for that game started way back in 2010, but there's a lot of pre-visualization and design mm -hmm. years of that before and engine work bethesda does not work on somebody else's engine they work on their own engine so for for these titles so these these titles are not something that i mean technically speaking production never really stops on these types of games for this particular studio they're always kind of more or less working on it 
and which brings us to some of the news that peaked. Uh, so we'll cover that before we get into the reasons as to why you will not see this at the show this year. So some news peaked this week about uh, some some voice actors doing some recording work. One in particular made a a bit of a loose lipped post uh, at, mm-hmm. about voice work that they were doing for Bethesda. Part of the message got screen capped and has been making the rounds online. So we, let's let's talk about this real quick. So the the main actors in uh, Fallout Four were recording their lines for about what was it two and a half years because there was a metric ton of voice work in that game, and some of the things that lacked some quality was some of the voice work for the like, the minor characters like the the expendable characters that you run into, you know, all the random shopkeeps and other people. It's this small team of, of voice actors doing a lot of these lines. What Bethesda has kind of noted and what they're trying to improve upon is some of those lines, because those are the lines that you actually end up hearing the most. So what they're doing um, is they've been getting some of their voice actors to come in and they've started working with them on some of that basic stuff a lot sooner where they're under the director who's who's doing that audio cap when before it was just done by a tech. It wasn't being full-on directed uh, with the care and attention of the main character's lines. So now they're doing this with a lot of their smaller lines, which means before they start working on the main plot stuff, they're going to try and cover as much of this random stuff as you can. For example, if you walk into a shop and you say, hey, have a look at what I got. That line could be recorded without any knowledge of, I mean, hell, you can almost record that line without even any knowledge of what you know genre you're in. So it's not necessarily something that that people should freak out about and go, oh my goodness, they're going to talk about this. No, they're not. They're not. We did mention last week, of course, we might the, the, what we we might possibly get an update on um, what they're doing with their engines. I mean, that's a possibility. Um, you know what their what their tech is looking like these days. Uh, that's possible, but as like Sib said, um, aside from maybe a note of that, hey, we are working on this. We're not going to see anything, and I doubt we'll even get that. I mean, I, they're probably going to have enough to tell us about that we'll get excited about uh, without needing to fill it in with, oh yeah, and several years from now you're going to get Fallout Five and Elder Scrolls Six. We we all know that we're going to get Elder Scrolls Six and Fallout Five. This it this is Todd Howard we're talking about, and and um, they're not sitting back there going, oh gee, you know, maybe we should try, you know, not making a Fallout game. <laughs> Let's not, you know, that stuff that our fans love and they want us to make more of. Let's not do that. You're fired. So that's what we're not going to see. But what are we going to see from Bethesda this year at E3? We have some hints. We have some very good data that uh, corresponds to the uh, the Bethesda invite graphic that Todd Howard tweeted out earlier this year. So let's talk about that. So we we think we have a fairly good idea of which IPs we're going to be seeing games announced for this year. So uh, let's go. Let's get into this. What do we know, and how do we know it? Bethesda sent out this picture of Bethesda Land. Yeah, and they hid they hid some information in this, and it's really awesome. So if you're looking at this thing here, you know you got uh, you get the Quake world, you got the Doom world, you got the Skyrim world, you got the uh, the Prey world, and you got the uh, Dishonored world, and it's all together. And you got two of these other things. Yeah, there's two that are under construction. So each each of these segments, I'll put the graphic up in the in the thumbnail and in uh, so you'll be able to see it on the video if you're watching this on YouTube. So it's like all these different segments of a park, like a Disneyland style park or something. Yeah. And so a bunch of them are, are all those games that Saib just mentioned. And then there's two that are under construction and it's unclear what they are. So we're pretty sure we're going to be getting two big announcements this year at E3 because this was sort of an E3 invite from Todd Howard. Yeah. And and it's been confirmed that we are getting two big announcements of previously unmentioned titles. So in this graphic here, on the bottom right, we've got coming soon, and the noticeable thing about this one is it seems to be pretty high-tech construction stuff. Like there's these walls that are they're not the average wall that you'd see. They're kind of like basically blue and teal and, and that color, and you see pardon our dust, 
and you see coming soon and then in the construction if you actually like map out some of these wall sections you can actually kind of get a word that forms and that word is c-o-v-f-e-f-e -E. <laughs> it's actually not i just made that up and that word is starfield i find that one sketchy i don't think that that was meant to say starfield but i'd say that's a good bet Several years ago, Bethesda's parent company, ZeniMax, filed a trademark application for Starfield. What exactly is Starfield? Is this a new IP, or do we just not know? Basically, we just don't really know. Okay. Could it be one of the new uh, mobile games, as opposed to a big major... It's possible. I do kind of have an, have an inside source that has said that at some point that they were working on a procedurally generated space game. Now, you might have nightmares thinking about, you know, <laughs> uh, No Man's Sky. Um, you might have nightmares thinking about a lot of things like that. And this rumor has been around for yeah, for a decently long time. So it's, it's been around for almost a year. I would wager that it would have some a little bit more of an RPG feel to it. Um, that I think that's the only way that they can really set the story apart or set the game apart from the myriads of both high level triple a and the the non-stop waves of indie games that are procedurally generated space games right now mm -hmm. but if they were going to shock and bring one out bringing one out this year would be really really good and not next year see Next year, you're going to be dealing with more of these polished titles coming out. We've got Star Citizen that is expecting to make a, a landfall sometime in, in 2018, 2019. So if they wanted to get on this, you know, and sell a ton of copies of this game, if it is a spaceship kind of themed RPG, uh, procedurally generated space adventure game, mm -hmm. they'd want to do it. They'd want to do it before some of these big titles hit. Maybe also while the, the ache from... <laughs> The disappointment of No Man's Sky is still somewhat raw because mm -hmm. it sounds like that could be what we were hoping No Man's Sky would be. Yeah. Now, up at the top left. The other under construction area, yeah. Probably either Evil Within or probably Wolfenstein. My money would be on a Wolfenstein release, which is yeah. really exciting to me. I love the Wolfenstein series I have since I was ever since I was a little boy who was not allowed to play it. Now, last year at E3, there was a tease that flashed up on the screen at one point that mm -hmm. suggested that there might be a new Wolfenstein game coming out titled The New Colossus. And yes. then later that later uh, last year, we got some confirmation that the voice actor who voices William Blazkowicz was working on some stuff. It was a pretty good hint that uh, a new Wolfenstein game was in development. Yeah. I, I suspect that a new Wolfenstein game probably is what we're going to have. Some of the other news that we've got is we seem to have yet another confirmation coming out that we've got something that is Fallout related and also probably one or two mobile games mm -hmm. coming out, which means one of them could be just a mobile version of Scrolls. You wouldn't want to make kind of like a Hearthstone game and not have it available on mobile devices that's just kind of insane mm -hmm. so that's to be expected but we keep hearing this talk about this other mobile game that's coming out and it's probably has something to do with fallout that seems to be a strong possibility and they already have a ton of assets already engaged in the fallout shelter game so probably something that we can expect which would be really awesome so that's what we think is coming down the pipe from bethesda this year we will find out for sure next weekend at uh, the E3 press conferences. Bethesda's, of course, is on Sunday the 11th, 9 p.m. Pacific time. I am going to be glued to my seat, let me tell you, on that Sunday. My goodness. And then there's a variety of other press conferences that we'll be taking in and giving our reactions to as well, so we're very much looking forward to that. We're sure you are too. This has been the Augmented Reality Podcast, presented by the Triple S League on behalf of Sibsidian, Kavfifi. 
Thanks for listening to Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. If you appreciate this weekly content, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patrons get exclusive access to podcast outtake videos, downloadable music, an RSS feed of our podcast, and more. See patreon.com slash the Triple S League for details. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.